On today's episode, we're still talking about the draft. We are breaking down the NFC, the winners, the losers, the rookies. How do we like them compared to each other? Make sure you subscribe to this channel, like the video, and enjoy. Welcome to the Fantasy Footballers Podcast with your hosts, Andy Holloway, Jason Moore, and Mike Wright. Ah, welcome in. Thursday, May 5th. Cinco de Mayo. Yeah. Do you know how long it took me to realize that Cinco de Mayo meant... Okay. The fifth of May. It's literally the words. Yeah, Cinco it's, de it Mayo. is Spanish. It's yeah, it was, <laughs> it was like it was another language. <laughs> Jason Morris here, Mike Wright, Andy Holloway. I was trying to find this Cinco mayonnaise. Uh huh. Uh, quick question on today's show: We've got NFL news to talk about. Well, a little bit, and then NFC winners and losers as well. I I did want. I mean, I promised it. We had a big giveaway. Thank you to everybody that has pre-ordered the UDK. That is still available for pre-order until June 1st, so you can get in there. The Dynasty startup rankings and the rookie rankings are available mm -hmm. right now at ultimatedraftkit.com. But we have a special giveaway. <laughs> and uh, let's go ahead and award a listener league spot to... Oh... The Melodious, Matthew Harp. Oh, oh, yeah, it was Matthew Harp. Matthew, congratulations. You are victorious. Wait, we don't have the other winners? We do. They're on the right. Where? The, in the, the big note that from Brooks? Would you like me to oh, read them? See, see I, I keep my screen a little tighter. Ah. So, Mike, why don't you give away the other I items? was a little surprised you went right to the, <laughs> the big giveaway. Yeah, we this is on Brooks. But I agree. Congratulations, Matthew Harp, for the Listener League spot. Uh, the Just, or Justin Jefferson jersey went to Jordan Basinger. The Debo jersey went to Joe Pepe. And uh, the Mark Andrews mini helmet went to Mike Schrader. All right, congratulations to everybody who won. And if you didn't win, you still won because you have the UDK. Yeah, you won in our heart. Yeah, and in your leagues. <laughs> uh, Twitter at the FF Ballers if you want to follow us on so social media, youtube.com slash the fantasy footballers. Make sure you subscribe over there, click the bell. Quick question of the day is, is dynasty related. It's something a lot of fantasy players are going through right now. You might have started a, uh, your rookie drafts or you're in the middle of one, or you're about to go into one. And and the question is simply, what is one tough dynasty rookie draft decision that you've had to make in your leagues thus far? I know that – I, I want to say you, Jason, you've been in three. Uh, two, two, two right okay. now. Yeah, two startups that I'm in the middle of right now. One just finished. Mike and I are co-managing um, another. And in that spot, this is this – is, this was really tough yep. for me personally. We're uh, at the back of the second, and we had to make a decision – uh, between Mechie and David Bell. And these are two good wide receivers. Mechie out of Alabama, uh, the 44th pick in the NFL draft, traded up to get him, finds himself on the Houston Texans, which has you know great opportunity for a wide receiver to come in. But he's got an ACL tear, and I I didn't love Mechie. I, he, wasn't, he wasn't my favorite prospect. And on the other side, David Bell... 6'2", 205. Um, tons of production. Tons of production. Early breakout age. Doesn't turn 22 until December. Um, didn't have the greatest athletic profile, but the way he plays is very Anquan Bolden um, and finds himself connected to uh, Deshaun Watson. So it was really, really, really tough. Um, in the end, I took the bet on probability of draft capital. So we went with Mechie over David Bell. Which but, I, I think was, uh, I didn't have a horse in the race, but I think that's the pick I would have made. And I think Mechie is a very interesting prospect insofar as the injury maybe stifling some of where his 
potential um, draft capital could have been. You know, he could have been a first round wide receiver, late first round wide receiver, and in, in playing at Alabama, I, I think that's a tough decision. Yeah, and that is John Mechie the third. Yeah, to, to not give, if you thought it was the second. Respect. Yeah, when we said yeah. Mechie, you might have thought the second. Uh, I think the most difficult thing, or one of the more difficult things, was I had a couple of third round picks in our main dynasty league rookie draft single quarterback single quarterback league and and Malik Willis is just there he's yeah. just he's just there in the third and you and you're taking shots at um at Pierre Strong you're taking shots at some of these wide receivers that you know you don't know if they're going to see the field and when they're going to see the field and then you've got this tantalizing you still got the imprint of potential first round pick Malik Willis and you've seen all the comments with Ryan Tannehill. You know, I'm not going to – it's not my job to mentor him. But, like, if Malik Willis does happen somehow, it's going to be very valuable for fantasy. Sure. So I ended up passing on him on both of my picks. but And he did get drafted in between them. But it was just something that uh, – it was a really difficult decision. I went with the running back, um, uh, Pierre Strong, in, in New England. Right. But – that was what I came up against is how far do you let him drop? And I think he'll be undrafted in some leagues. And like, especially in a single quarterback, we were looking at Tannehill's contract situation. It, I mean, they can always try and trade him, but if they, you know, if he's still on the team, it seems very difficult contractually for the Titans to cut bait from Ryan Tannehill over the next two seasons and taking, you know, I know a third round pick is you're just looking for upside and, and all of that stuff, but holding a, Backup quarterback for multiple years is that's that's difficult. Those yeah. roster spots are valuable. Yeah, it, it would really be Tannehill has to play poorly this year and say I'm not worth the money. He he costs uh, thirty six million dollars against the cap next year. Now, if they were to cut him, they would still carry eighteen million dead cap, but that's still a lot of cap it savings. It wouldn't be that cut and dry. Literally, it would be chopping. Tannehill in the trade market because you're ready to move on the team struggle Derek Henry maybe you're done uh, it would be something in a rebuilding fashion a la Matt Ryan being traded I think is the way that I would see him departing um, but Mike what is your most difficult decision or, or one of the tough ones that you uh, see one of the tougher ones is what do you do with the tight end position in rookie drafts is always very difficult aside from Kyle Pitts where he was a top five pick yeah in the NFL draft but Tight ends, they they take time and to develop. And this year, the the best one on the board, you know, according to the NFL draft at least, was Trey McBride, who was selected in the second round by the Arizona Cardinals. And the landing spot is very solid. Kyler and Cliff, they are a pass for pass friendly offense, and that's that's who the offense is going to be run by for years to come with Kyler. He'll get an extension very soon. Cliff just got his. And you look at the – who do they have on this roster? Well, you have Hopkins who just got popped for PEDs. When a wide receiver is getting popped for PEDs in their 30s, that's not great. Uh, you is his, Are we about to see the Cliff hit for DeAndre Hopkins sooner than later? Uh, they're just not really loaded at weapons. I, I know they got Hollywood Brown. And then Zach Ertz just signed a, a huge deal – but at the same time, Zach Ertz is going to turn 32 this year. And they, they can't really get out from underneath that contract for a couple years. But Trey McBride is so dominant uh, as a, a football player when I'm watching him on film. He's just – he's very exciting. But he's not going to be – he'll have little to no value if Zach Ertz is – Still on the is still healthy and playing this year. Well, the nice thing is, so Zach Ertz's contract, it's basically a two year contract. He's going to play this year, and he's going to play next year because they they they're paying him a lot of money. After that, they can cut him, and he'll be thirty four years old. He already seems like he's thirty six years old, right? But this is a player who had one hundred and twenty five targets, and tight ends usually take two or three years to come into their own. So it's one of those things where I think three years from now, Trey McBride, very good fantasy asset. However. It's a long wait. It's a long it wait to just draft someone and hold on for a while. I know we took him in our league, but we, it was like we paired him with Travis Kelsey, where we know Kelsey's going to be on his way down, but he's going to be awesome because he's Travis 
You guys took Trey McBride? Kelsey. We did. Very yeah. nice. And so he's kind of our heir apparent a couple years and from the, now. And the number two tight end off the board, who we just call Greg, um, <laughs> did, the didn't, didn't go draft, didn't get drafted in our dynasty rookie. Well, I thought that was pretty wild. Uh, it was a consideration at the end of the third. It's just part of that decision making was, I'm going to have to wait two or three years yeah. for this player. And maybe it doesn't even work, right? I mean, it cannot work for first round tight ends that get drafted uh, a la David and Joku and Evan Ingram, and you just wait and wait and wait and wait. And OJ Howard and no fan. Oh, you know, all of them. Got it. Yeah. Basically, all tight ends suck except for what, two, three? Right. Yeah, it's tough. It's tough. Uh, we are going to do a two round rookie mock draft next week. So, all of you dynasty players get excited about that. Um, there is a new mock draft up in the Dynasty Pass right now, so you can check that out at ultimatedraftkit.com. Uh, the only news worth mentioning briefly is that there are five international games that were announced, three in London. Uh, the Seahawks and Bucks will be in Munich, Germany Woo! Bonjour for the over first there. time ever. And then Mexico City, the Cardinals and 49ers. Cardinals are going to lose a, an actual home game. And so they'll be in, in Mexico City, and they'll lose one of their home games uh, in Glendale. But sending Drew Locke away overseas, it seems like something I'd want to do. Yeah, I mean, you're not, you're not putting your best foot forward. Uh, the Bucks as, are uh, there. But that's, well, that's true. They're going to really hype up the, the Tampa team. And Who's going to be? So you, they always put the player oh up. the marquee yeah so it's going to be tom brady versus dk metcalf okay yeah, yeah, that's probably yeah, the right call that. there's a long list that you'd go through before you got to drew Locke <laughs> and that marquee uh also that's november 13th so who knows if drew Locke is the starter by then that's fair he that's won't fair. Be. um baker mayfield's still a brown by the way i know what, what are you gonna do man how awkward oh does that get I mean, he's not. I mean, aren't you getting in there and working out? Some of these players getting no. in there and working out? I mean, no. he's not. He's not showing up for anything right now. Well, I, yeah, I know. It'd be, he probably doesn't have any of the merch anymore. But if you're the Browns, that's got to be what you want. Assuming that you're going to have six games without Deshaun Watson, wouldn't it be better for you to have those six games filled by Baker? No. I mean, if I'm Baker, I'm not doing it. Right. I would agree with that. Is it more like if Baker, let's say he, he, he has to, he wants the money, right? You're going to get paid money to play in those games. You sit them out, you don't get paid. Is it more of an of kind of a screw you to perform well and then does he throw the like the bird up at the coach? <laughs> or is it to perform he, poorly and tank it no. for the team? A professional athlete is going to go out. If no, I'm talking about Baker. Yeah. 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 <laughs> oh, yeah. Uh, oh, you got nothing to say after that. <laughs> well, I mean, look, the guy's the guy lost his job clearly, but I do think that Baker is better than a lot of quarterbacks who actually have starting jobs. Well, right that, now, that's Jason's point, right? That it'd be better to have Baker play those games. Yeah, yeah. Also, the full NFL schedule will be released on May twelfth. Okay. It's always fun. All right, well, that'll be cool. Uh, anything else that we need to talk about news wise, Brooksy? No, sir. Baker wasn't just traded. Okay. Uh, we just covered the AFC winners and losers from the very eventful NFL draft. Time to move on to the NFC. Hey, rookie. Welcome to the NFL. Okay, so we'll be covering kind of the main fantasy takeaways from what happened at the NFL draft. Not discussing every single pick for every single team. Uh, all the dynasty, you know, the dynasty pass has all of the full rankings and production profiles and rookie mock drafts and risers and fallers. All the implications from the actual draft are in there. Uh, so you can check that out. And then we've got some new articles up on the website. A lot of them actually, ever since the draft happened that you can check out at the fantasy com. Let's talk about the lions. Let's start in the NFC North. Jameson Williams. Very surprised, uh, des uh, surprising destination, right? We didn't project Detroit to move up, right? Trader 20 spots, yeah. I did not project that. Yeah, so this is what can throw a wrench in all of your predictions is a team that has no possible draft capital to acquire a player, makes a big move, and they, they move up, and the Lions did this. They moved up and grabbed Jamison Williams. We talked about how good Jamison Williams is, but how 
you know, with the injury that he needed to go to a team with a little bit of a longer timeline uh, that can afford to not, th- you know, not have this guy for the beginning part of the year. That's what happened. Detroit ends up with Jameson Williams, first round pick, number 12 overall. And instantly you have to say, you know, what is the destination like for him? But then DJ Chark, free agent pickup for the Lions and Amon Ross St. Brown, darling of the fantasy world at the end of the year, their long-term value has been impacted. Yeah, I mean, uh, we we knew leaving last year that Amon Ross St. Brown was not going to be what he was for that small stretch when he was the only target able to throw the ball at. You know, TJ Hawkinson was gone. DeAndre Swift was gone. A lot of a lot of players were down, and Amon Ross showed that he is a good NFL wide receiver. He can hang, but we knew he wasn't the one. He wasn't going to be the future wide receiver one for this team, obviously with the Lions trading up to the number 12 spot to select what they hope is a superstar wide receiver. Um, that says that Jamison Williams is is more the number one. Now, when that happens, it'll be a while. It it could be a while, and I think it should be a while. I think they should take their time. We we have hearsay. This would get uh denounced in a court of law as hearsay, but there, Objection. Have, there have been rumors uh that we have heard on the down low behind the scenes with some connections <laughs> of, so many disclaimers yeah, that go uh, on. That that uh, a, a trusted source. Yeah, okay, a is this tr- something I've not heard? I maybe not. Um, that Jamison Williams has not been great at his rehab. Um, I think is the the truest way to say it. Just yep. kind of um not been the the having Hardest the work worker ethic or? that yes, you want not- to see, and you combine that with some of um some you know grading of his football IQ and so like I loved Jamison Williams he was my uh number two wide receiver pre-draft I think he's great but when I heard some of those things those are those intangibles you just don't get to see when you watch a guy who's a great athlete play football and be great you don't know his work ethic you don't know his his habits and his uh personality and so obviously they're hoping he's a superstar but they were we, willing to go move up for him, and, and he mm-hmm. became the number three wide receiver off the board. So take that for whatever you – take it for the hearsay it is. Okay. Did you take it for just that? Yeah, I mean it – Or it, did, it, did it change the way you draft him in, in a rookie draft? Um, you know, it, it, it certainly gives me pause when I'm up at the top. If you are talking about uh, Traylon Burks or Jamison Williams, I'm going Traylon Burks. So you're Burks saying or, when the hearsay comes out in the courtroom and – the opposing counsel objects to it, it still oh, reached yeah. the jury's ears. You heard it. Okay. <laughs> I mean, you heard it. And uh, the Borgogan <laughs> said he picked Garrett Wilson in a rookie draft over Jamison Williams because of that. I was terrified. To take Jameson after that news? I just, there's so much risk. He could bust more than other guys. Well, and you, you're, you're going to have turnover potentially at the quarterback position by the time he kind of ascends to that level. Now, Jared Goff right now, adding a superstar potential athlete and Jamison Williams can't hurt. No, and Jared Goff can get Jared Goff can get it done for fantasy purposes. They're going to throw the ball a ton. This is what happened yes, last year. They, had, they will have to. They had a lot of these games where they they were able to kind of not come all the way back, but make some of the you know they compete from the first minute of the game to the last minute of the game. That's a Dan Campbell uh, impact there. They do compete. Yeah, they've got a good receiving core for Jared Goff. If you if you get Williams back healthy with Hawkinson, with Swift, with Amon Ra, with DJ Chark, that's that's better than half of the league. Do they have a better record this year than the uh, Chicago Bears? Yes. In division, they will beat the Bears. Okay. See, I like making you say that, and nobody thinks I hate the Bears. All right. Speaking of the Bears. Hmm. I mean, they, they did have a draft. Shock the world. But they did not do what the Jets did and further equip their young quarterback that was drafted by a previous regime. Justin Fields comes away from this draft, in my opinion, a fantasy loser uh, because, I mean, how many picks did they have before the end of round seven? They had three sevenths, three sixths, two fifths, two seconds, and a third. I mean, they did some work on the offensive line. Tried to, uh, but Valus Jones Jr., wide receiver out of Tennessee, was their only kind of offensive impact potential, and that's the third round, late third round pick. And 
this is a guy who had 807 yards of receiving in his fifth year at college. Previous career high <laughs> through four years of college was 280 yards of receiving. So this was kind of a surprising pick. Does not seem like the answer. He turns 25 in a week. That's I and look, yeah, sure, a 25 year old. That's fine to get it done. You're still good in the NFL at 25, but turning he will turn 25 before he takes a pro snap. Uh, DJ DJ Moore yes. just turned 25 years old <laughs> a few days, like a week ago. Wow, on his second contract, DJ Moore. Mm -hmm. So. You know, they also took a six-round running back. Not surprising. They needed some depth there, but not an impact to uh, the incumbents. And then, you know, Darnell Mooney didn't get any high-tier competition. I mean, Byron Pringle didn't get any more competition. Right. And, and to be fair for the, the selection of Jones there in the third, like afterwards, you know, guys that I probably would have taken if I were a GM, you know, like Jalen Tolbert was there, David Bell was there. Uh, but those are really the only two notable guys at the wide receiver position that yeah. they that they leapfrogged to to take Jones. So they could was, have spent a second, one of their two seconds. Right. Oh, yeah, yeah. They definitely could have done that. I. But the the Bears are signaling what they are doing, and it's replacing their quarterback next year. They're playing for 2023. And Justin Fields will be sacrificed. Yeah. Hopefully not. Vikings last year they were eight and nine. Uh, what were your takeaways from their draft? Uh, you know, didn't hit the offensive side or the fantasy relevant side until the fifth round. Backup running back Ty Chandler. I, th I thought. Okay. Did yeah. you see the Vikings last year? <laughs> their defense was the defense was the downfall of the team. I like their pick. So from I a don't football perspective. Yes, but you're not walking away from this saying, you know they. Nothing changes for right. their offense. Their offense, uh, Adam Thielen's a year older, sure, but Justin Jefferson's going to be great. Dalvin Cook's going to be great. Um, the They have an addition this year, which is Irv Smith Jr. Yeah, baby. And I, I think Big Irv's going to be uh, one of my favorite fantasy redraft picks this, this year. And I'm going to be a little scared off. Of Irv? Yes. Yeah, just Do coming so. off of the injury. because that It was a meniscus, right? Um, I thought it was. Yeah, let, well, I'll, I'll double check that. You give your thoughts. Well, the, the, every, it was all Irv Swerve heading into the year. Yes, but he ended up with an early season injury, and and I just worry. It was a meniscus. It was a meniscus, but it yeah. kept him out the whole year, right? Yeah, because he had so, surgery. Yeah, so I mean, you're coming off knee surgery, hasn't had that, um, hasn't established himself yet. So from a competitive standpoint, there will be other other tight ends competing for an important role on this team. So. I'm just saying I'm a, I'm not I'm not oh. going to be where I was with Irv last year I'm this okay. year. I'm okay with being hesitant, but I mean, Irv is going to be a later round tight end. He, he probably won't be won't be drafted. Yeah, he might be undrafted, but not in my league. <laughs> you're going to waste a pick on him versus, yes, I will. versus <laughs> yes, si I will. signing him. Really? So you're you're in too. I am. I mean, Conklin's still under contract or no? No, no he's gone. He was, he's on the Jets. They got rid of basically. They still all have Herndon under, under contract. Nope. <laughs> He's gone. Luke uh, Stalker. Do we have a Luke Stalker in the no, building? No, but we have Johnny Munt. Oh, yeah, Munt. Yeah. Mm. Uh, the Green Bay Packers. Let's wrap up the uh, the North here. The Packers traded up in the second round. Now they surprised no one and everyone by not selecting a replacement for Devontae Adams in the first. Oh, it was so great. Uh, but Christian Watson, they did make the move on day yeah. two. And uh, out of North Dakota State. I, th I mean, you look at this situation, and there were a lot of wide receivers off the board already when Christian Watson went off the board, much like Sky Moore with the Chiefs, which we covered on the AFC show. But obviously, opportunity is a lot uh, of the equation, or a big piece of the equation, I should say. So what? how are you valuing Christian Watson here and what he brings to the table for your fantasy teams in year one? Yeah, I think he's a good player. When I watch the film, I really like it. Now, there's a lot of red flags. He was a little bit older, uh, you know, not small an early school. declare, small school. And, you know, we talk about Vela's career high being in the 800s. Well, that's the same here for Christian Watson. There's a difference, though, because he played for North Dakota State, uh, you know, a, a dominant running game. They, they, they have a certain style of play. Um, when I just watched the film, I thought he had a first-round grade. Then he goes to the Senior Bowl, dominates at the Senior Bowl. He was the talk of the town. Everyone said he was great. 
He is sub 4-4 as a big guy, so he is a great athlete. They traded up. He finds himself in a great position. So when you're in your rookie drafts, when you get to that pick eight, um, he's in consideration right there. And let me let me phrase the question differently for you, okay? Because I think it would be more helpful when you get into these drafts, and we say that there's a tear break, right? Is Watson capable of making us look stupid? That's the question I want to know because you you look at it on the surface. This was a player that has the potential of being a first round pick. Could have like if Christian Watson had gone where Traylon Burks went, would any of us been shocked? No. Okay. So in light of that, and being attached to Aaron Rodgers and having the Lizard King and the Lazard King as the other comp and Randall Cobb as yep. competition. Could we be in the moment where we say Watson should have been considered for the second, third, fourth pick in rookie drafts? I think at the end of the year, if Watson is the number one fantasy producer, I wouldn't be shocked. Um, the history though of rookie wide receivers doing things with Aaron Rodgers isn't really great. It, takes time and he doesn't trust. have time exactly <laughs> so <laughs> so it's just is 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 the talent and the lack of time going to force the issue to where christian watson is a stud right, right away right or is what has happened in you know over the last decade just going to continue to happen and i lean that direction i think that he will not be a breakout year one but he could make me look real stupid for saying that and i like the talent he he can make us look stupid. He can make the Green Bay Packers look really stupid as well. Uh, in terms of rookie draft, like I am perfectly fine taking him after the the first rounders and the the two running backs, uh, Brees Hall and Kenneth Walker. You know, so like he, the Christian Watson versus Sky Moore, who went to Kansas City. That's a very interesting debate, and I think that. The ceiling, if they both hit, Christian Watson's ceiling is higher uh, because of just how I profile him to be, you know, a true outside wide receiver. But Sky Moore feels like a safer pick for your dynasty team of he will produce where Watson, I think, could end up being a complete bust. He, he His range of outcomes to me is all over the place. But in rookie drafts, I want upside, so I am absolutely willing to take him in that, like, later first. And then they doubled up on yeah, wide receiver, uh, grabbing Romeo Dubs yeah. in the fourth round out of Nevada. Thoughts on Dubs, and could he have an impact in year one? Uh, I mean, he certainly could, but for coming out of Nevada, I wouldn't expect him to surpass those other three veterans that we've talked about. So I, he's he's interesting, like in the fourth round or so of your rookie picks. Do the moves that the Packers did the moves that the Packers made at wide receiver impact the way you view Aaron Rodgers at all? Fantasy winner, fantasy loser coming out of the draft. Obviously, they gave him another weapon. Rookie wide receivers can make huge year one impacts. We've seen it in consecutive seasons with the likes of Justin Jefferson and and uh, Jamar Chase. I I think it it negatively impacted him in the sense that most people assumed they would use one of their multiple first round picks on a wide receiver, and that one of those top guys might slide to him. So that was pre-draft, the assumption. Christian Watson I like, but he's less good than what I assumed they would get. I, I think I'm on the other side. I think this is a very valuable weapon that they gave him. Watson? Yes, and I think if they had simply, you know, they traded up. They knew where to position for him. If they had just taken him at 28, I don't know if the discussion, the discussion might be different. They finally invested a first round pick. This right. is the guy Aaron Rodgers wanted. Instead, they trade up. It's eight. It's six picks after their twenty eighth pick. They end up with Christian Watson. So, I think that this might be the sneakiest, and like you said, maybe a wide range of outcomes. But this could be the guy that we look back and say, "Oh gosh, we shouldn't. Why did? Yes. Yeah. Why did we? Uh, Jamison Williams. He's not even back yet. You didn't get any production out of him in year one. And here was Christian Watson with Aaron Rodgers, and we're going, and and all Aaron Rodgers had was Sammy Watkins." And Alan Lazard, who good player, not a dominator, sure, good role player, touchdown upside, but not somebody that's going to go be Devonte Adams. And so would you take him over Olave? And uh, probably not because of yeah. how much I love Olave. I think Olave is just a more probably refined not. player. And yeah. let us not forget, you know, out of Clemson last year, they took Amari Rogers in the third round. Yep. So 
he'll be coming into his sophomore season for a – I mean, he saw what uh, – four, four catches. <laughs> yeah, he had eight targets throughout the year. Uh, but that doesn't mean that he's completely dead to the team. He, it's true. He could surprise us as well. All right, quick break, then the NFC South. I am going to start with the Panthers. And now that he's been selected in the third round, quarterback Matt Corral can be Coral. The, he can be the OK Corral. Oh, oh he's because he didn't golden. he didn't have enough draft capital okay. to be better than so he you know and honestly OK is is really it's an upward movement for this team at the quarterback <laughs> yeah, position. So that's okay. the OK Corral, I think, could end up being really nice for them. Well, I assume he's going to get some starts this year because Sam Darnold will start the season and then they will watch him and go, what think, else we got? And I think maybe is I think maybe he starts the season. Well, I, I mean, this is still a team even with this okay, is still a team. Is that the no, sentence? <laughs> even with OK Corral being there, they have not been relegated. This is still a team that could try to go after a veteran quarterback. OK, that's um, fair. The only other thing we're talking about from this draft from a fantasy football perspective is they did use their number six pick on their pick of the litter. They got Icky, a great run blocking uh, tackle. So yes, Christian McCaffrey, huge, huge even, even Darnold. I mean, it. they had one of the worst offensive lines in the league, and this is a ready to play guy coming in that will improve that, you know, give them more time to throw, open up some more lanes for Christian McCaffrey. So it does help the offense. Was it Neil that went one peck after him? Yes. To the Giants? And did you like Icky more than Neil? Yes. Okay. Much more. Uh, the Falcons got some stuff to talk about with Atlanta. Yes. Number eight overall pick, Drake London, wide receiver out of USC. Third round pick, Desmond Ritter, who had been mocked in some drafts at number eight to Atlanta. They get him in the third round out of Cincinnati. When I looked at when I watched film on Malik Willis and Desmond Ritter, there were things that I I like more about Ritter than Malik Willis. So getting him in the third, giving yourself a shot, having an open, you know, you've got a a chance to go get one of the big quarterbacks next year for Atlanta because he could be five, six, seven in the first round. But you could also give De Desmond Ritter a shot. I think it's the right kind of balance of risk-reward. And then they drafted a running back, Tyler Algier, out of BYU, released Mike Davis right afterwards. But he was a fifth-round pick, so you're getting down there in draft capital where the opportunity looks great on paper. Cordero Patterson, dot, 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 Damon yeah. Williams. Tyler Algier is one of the most fascinating players in this entire draft. When you talk the quick question of the show, like who, who do you really have a hard time with? I loved the film on yep, Tyler agreed. Algier. I think he's very good. He's a big-bodied back. I like that. A he, BBB. Uh, he, he can catch the ball. I like that. He went to a spot where he has all the opportunity in the world, but he went there in the fifth round. This is not a heavy investment. Let's say he goes out, and he's pretty good, and he's decent for fantasy. He's a top 24 running back. That could happen. I can see that. Rookie running backs have that impact on a on the on a regular basis. And then next year he could be replaced sure. because he's a fifth round running back. Let me I mean, just giving you some names, I'm just going back a couple drafts for those middling round names so that you can kind of connect the dots here. You go I'm gonna go fourth and fifth round a couple years ago. Josh Kelly, LaMichael P. Ryan, Anthony McFarlane, DJ Dallas, Jason Huntley, fifth round pick. Who? Of course. So, yeah, good old Huntley. Eno Benjamin. So those are you're, you're getting into that realm where the hits are overwhelmed by the misses more often than not. So that's the only thing mm -hmm. to keep in mind. Um, this is not like uh, who was the Tennessee back that we were that you were pining oh, for? Oh, Alex he, Barnes. Yeah, where he went fully undrafted. Yes. You do have an investment here, but um, but just temper like. If you see the opportunity in Atlanta and you overemphasize that in your rookie drafts, you're probably going to pay the price. Yep. Is that fair? Yep. Uh, but circling back to Drake London, year one impact, what is the expectation here for Drake? The expectation is he should get near 100 targets. They're not going to be great coming from Marcus Mariota. Um, I believe Drake London is super talented. He was my number one wide receiver uh, pre-draft. And so, I, you know, 
it's between him and Traylon Burks for me this season as to who scores the most fantasy points. Um, I I lean more towards the Traylon side just because of quarterback. Um, but Drake London will have the opportunity to be the one. And right. next year, they're going to use their first round pick on a quarterback. So this isn't a guy who's going to be replaced. This is a guy who's going to grow. I love him in, in, in drafts. I would still take him over Traylon Burks um, in a dynasty with future outlook included. Yeah, with the top 10 selection and the the way that this team is laid out for the future, Drake London, he moved up to my number one rookie pick. So like wide, uh, receiver. wide receiver, thank you. Yeah, I would go Brees Hall and then Drake London. And honestly, if people want to take Drake over Brees Hall, that doesn't bother me in, in the slightest. But the, the, the opportunity is tremendous this year. If he is actually as good as they hope he is with a top 10 pick in the NFL draft. Drake London, even, I think he can still have – I think he can be a top 24 guy this year. Yeah, I, I think what I'm seeing in rookie drafts with the whole, you know, Brees 50%, someone else 50% is it's coming down to what your team needs. It's coming down to do you have a need at running back? Do you have a need at wide receiver for these rookie drafts? And if you have a need at wide receiver – your choices are it's not one guy for a lot of people it's it's maybe it's Garrett Wilson maybe it's Drake London Olave Jamison Williams Traylon I think that's what sure. pushed that's what has helped push Brees up to number yeah, 1 yeah yeah where he's very secure for for he's, the majority he's the the running back you want yes but i again i think if you're looking at running back number 2 can be Kenneth Walker sure number 1 could be Kenneth Walker it could be uh, I don't know if the difference is very vast. Oh, my dynasty squad two. loves hearing that, Andy. Um, I think it is. <laughs> but you're basing that not on <laughs> Andy's. You're or, basing that on your belief of the talent between the two. I'm basing it uh, half Cause, on cause the talent because Seattle's done more work with running backs than New York's done in years. Yeah, but that was with Russell Wilson and a yeah, good offense. Fair. I think that the current Seattle Seahawks is not the best destination and where I really well, hoped Sean, Sean Alexander got it. Where I really hoped Walker would go and obviously we're going to get to the <laughs> NFC West here in a little bit. Sean Alexander. Yeah, we're going baby. Back. Yeah. We're going back. Um That's that's who Kenneth's going to be. I believe Kenneth Walker could be a pass catcher. But he went to a place that doesn't really have a great history of throwing uh, you know, obviously new quarterback, but I I don't think they're going to force him the issue to get him the ball in the passing game, and that will hurt his fantasy. That's fine. Well, you yeah. know what? History will tell the tale. In the future. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Uh, Chris Olave to the Saints. Let's move on. The Saints drafted Olave. Moved up. That was their guy. If you listen to beat writers <laughs> around New Orleans. a lot. Yeah, I mean, you have to really like Olave to uh, basically trade – what equated to John Dotson, Brian Robinson Jr. in the third round, and a fourth round pick? Is that right? Oh, because they traded up and then pre-draft, and then they had to trade more capital. Yeah. So if you look at everything they gave up just to get Chris Olave, it is a ton. And they did that over uh, Jamison Williams. You know, they they took him at eleven. He was still on the board. So this is their dude, and I don't blame them because no, I use one of my favorites. He's he's such a clean route runner. Um, just a tactician and very uh, subtle in his, you know, he's he's not this out of control guy. I love Chris Olave, but he does strike me as a wide receiver too. So I I think he's going to be a great wide receiver too. I just don't I, see I him don't ever know. being like a a full fledged target hog wide receiver one for their team. And obviously, right now he comes in behind Michael Thomas. Well, what I was going to say, though, is I see this list of fantasy winners and losers. Jameis Winston, a winner because Olave was the investment. Certainly. Loser being Traquan Smith. Certainly. Michael Thomas is not necessarily a winner to me in this situation. Like, I think Olave is the investment, the draft capital. That's the part of the future that they're looking for their next number one. That's what I think this pick is. You move up and you spend this much capital to go after Olave. The Michael Thomas experience has been a kaleidoscope of problems for years. This, there are not 
working they're not banking on Michael Thomas as a foundational piece of this offense for the future. So I think that means very good things for Olave moving forward. For the future, sure, but I think that they are banking on Michael Thomas for this team right now this year because this is we, we talked about it pre-draft. They either did that, you know, trade with the Eagles because they wanted to get a quarterback or as I said, I think this is a team that fully believes they could win this year. And and what do they do? They got a guy. They're like, we need to improve our offense. They just have they officially signed the Honey Badger yet? Yes. yes. Okay, so that's done. So they are making moves to win this year, and part of that is their belief that Michael Thomas will be back. Um, Michael Thomas the, needs to prove it on the field, though, because he's got 40 catches since 2019. Yeah. So quick follow-up for Michael Thomas. I mean, he's going to be on the, the team this year. We, we know that, but – it would be a $38.3 million dead cap to move on this year. It's $25 million the next year and thirteen point six the next year. Like So two years. It's a trade. It's a trade. That's the only I way mean, that they'll th be able to. There were already talks of that before. So. Right. But that's the only but way. But maybe that... they smoothed it over. Maybe it was a Sean Payton problem. Yeah. I don't know. It could have been. And the, But the you, you, you mentioned it in passing, but – and not really in a, in a redraft single quarterback situation is Jameis a huge winner. Maybe he ends up being that. It would be surprising. But in, in for Dynasty, like Jameis is the guy for the next two years. The Saints will be good. Mm -hmm. The Saints will not be one of these teams that can tank and end up in the top three for a replacement quarterback. It's going to be yeah. Jameis Winston. They get to play the Falcons and the Panthers four and times. So it's just it's wild that but it's going to be last year's Jameis. It's going to be defense and protecting the football. Right, but I'm not saying, Tampa Bay Jameis as a super flex. Oh yeah, player. he's streamable. He is he's in a very very good position. No, they, I mean if you look at the wide receiver core the way that when Arizona added Hollywood, well, and then they lost Hopkins. But before that, right. You kind of looked at it differently after one addition. And when you look at the Saints and you add Olave, all of a sudden all the other pieces start to fit. Michael Thomas has a counterpart. You have uh Hardy over the top, you have Traquan. Well, Traquan belongs where you don't count on Traquan. That's the that's the place that he belongs on an offense. It starts to look pretty good. And yeah. you're right, they are playing for now. I mean, going out and paying the Honey Badger is a move to win today. They also, won nine games last year, yeah. and Jameis played like half of them. Also, uh, worth noting, they got Trevor Penning, which was really important offensive tackle because they lost the, the best offensive tackle in free agency uh, this year. And they did not draft a running back. So Alvin Kamara is very, very safe in his volume this year. The Buccaneers at 13 and four last year, uh, they invested a third round pick on Rashad White out of Arizona State running back. Can we please have a moment of silence for Keyshawn Vaughn? Thank you. Yeah. That was long enough. Yeah, yeah. thank you. Yeah. Was good. Silence thank was kind of how I described the career. Yeah. yeah. Uh, Cade Otten, tight end, fourth round pick. Does that mean Gronk's not coming back? Maybe. Cameron Brate's still there. But rookies don't do nothing, and they don't do nothing with Brady. So this whole discussion here is it's Rashad White, and I think it's a great pick by the Buccaneers. They were able to wait until the third round. Rashad White is the most dominant pass-catching running back in terms of uh, his production profile. And you watch him. He's, he's a smooth player. That will be... I believe his role here as they just gave Leonard Fournette a big contract. Rashad White is the replacement. He's going to be a good compliment. He'll be the replacement for Giovanni Bernard. Why did you not go with a Keyshawn Gone joke? Ooh, yeah, that's it, a good question. I think because that one could have really hit home. I first I was going to pay the respects for former third round pick Keyshawn Vaughn, <laughs> and now we're making the jokes. Okay, all right. I just. Yeah, Keyshawn Gone was right there. Yeah, I know. I'm just bringing it up. NFC East. It's hard to joke in my current state. With Mo Keyshawn Vaughn? Yes. Morning, yeah. what what uh, well, could have been. Look, let, let, let me just let me read you the fourth round, fifth round, sixth round wide receivers. So y the hit rates, Keyshawn Vaughn, we, every year it's the same story. Last year, Chuba Hubbard was one of those guys. Michael Carter's in that group. Um, Ramondre did some things. Gainwell, Brightwell. How many wells were there? Uh, Larry Roundtree, Chris back. Evans, Demet Demetric Felton, Khalil Herbert. I guess you had some guys that showed some life last year. Yeah, but in, no one in the middle round. No one in Eli on, Mitchell. Like no one on the reds. Yeah, him. Yeah, I mean, but the San Francisco and draft capital. He just 
It's opposite. You, you, you throw it out the window. Jason spent a couple minutes during the NFL draft praising the New York Giants. With their <laughs> oh, man, the timing was so yeah. good. With the yeah. number five and number seven picks, both great. I think Thibodeau is incredible. Defensive end out of Oregon. And then they drafted Evan Neal, uh, number two tackle off the board. He was literally, and I'm like, I'm not being hyperbolic with the use of that word. He, we were talking Giants, and 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 Jace was like, man, they've they did such a great job with those first two picks. And moments later, boo doo doo, Wandale Robinson, wide receiver out of Kentucky, and Jason. <laughs> It's like I immediately retract everything nice I said about the Giants. So last year, we spent a decent amount of the offseason yep. with you guys bemoaning Kadarius Tony's uh, draft selection. Uh, Wandale was a surprise where he went. A second round pick, number 43 overall, converted running back from Kentucky. Had great production, is a great collegiate wide receiver. I, I take nothing away from that, but he's 178 pounds. And I that does not usually translate to the NFL field. And what's really weird here is that he's kind of like Darius Tony, who they had trade rumors about. Right. So it just was so weird to be like, we don't want Darius Tony. Let's go draft really high Darius Tony again. Ten picks in the first five rounds for the Giants. None of them quarterbacks. So Daniel Jones walks away. Still alive. Yeah, I mean, they, they didn't pick up his fifth-year option, but this is th they're saying this is it, Daniel. Go out and prove it, or we're going to replace you next year. The Commanders selected Jahan Dotson out of Penn State. Super Wide high. receiver, number 16 overall. His stock had been moving. I mean, there was a time when you could look at the Cardinals picking him at 23 as like a consolation for missing out on other guys. He ends up going 16. Um, which was ahead of Traylon Burks. Right, so, Traylon was 18. So, you know, I haven't heard a lot of, honestly, I haven't heard a lot about Dotson post-draft, but I haven't heard a lot of positive. I've heard people say he's too much like Terry McLaurin. I've heard people say, you know, that they j this is just not the destination they wanted for him. But, I mean, does he, he have first-year impact? potential yeah he absolutely does in the sense that the opportunity to come in if Curtis Samuel you know never really materializes into a thing they desperately need another wide receiver they they need it as bad as just about any team out in the NFL so he finds himself in a great situation in 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 two respects draft capital the number 16 overall pick, so they have invested in him. He's not going anywhere. He's not going to re be replaced. If he doesn't get off to a quick start, he's going to keep – the leash is long. That's fantastic. And he slots into a team that has a dire need. He's going to be on the field. He's going to be getting targets. Now, the question is whether or not this offense is good enough, whether Carson Wentz is good enough, and, you know, Jahan Dotson is – uh, you know, a, I, I believe his official weight was under 180 pounds as well. Um, I'll need to vet that because um, I'm seeing 184, but I think that's wrong. Um, so there's some red flags, but Jahan Dotson was the player that we good that we brought up pre it was on our live show that I said he's the one with the largest range of outcomes to me. me I could see him being irrelevant to me after the draft and he is not irrelevant. He's very let me let me ask a really hard question. If you're staring down, you know, the McLaurin future, going he's got he's got some money that he needs to get paid very soon. Mm -hmm. And then you've got Dodson on the other side. I mean, is this is this guy ready to take over if they don't I mean, if they don't bring Terry back? I think by next year, yes. Like McLaurin is in the contract year. It I guess it wouldn't be that surprising if the Manders choose to just I mean, let, let McLaurin play it out and go find – and he'll be the big name in free agency. The money flying around for wide receivers has led to a ton of them leaving where that first contract was. I mean, right. uh, A.J. Brown's the best example of that compared to, to McLaurin where, look, they're getting paid a lot. McLaurin has had some ups and some downs. They might not pay him. And Jahan Dotson, he was not an early declare, so people – you know, the, you can knock him for that, but 
two his his last two years really great production profile uh he's fast you know like a four four three guy and has good hands he's he's got great hands and i you know i'm seeing some people doing some wild stuff in their rookie drafts of these the running backs that we're talking about that these guys are interesting i i want to take lotto shots on these running backs but people are taking those running backs with picks over Jahan Dotson, and please, please don't do that. Take no, your shot. Take your shot on the first round wide receiver. And and what you might be doing, you might be suffering from what they call uh, the Wentz aroma. Yeah. And oh, so it's when Car- unpleasant. When when Carson Wentz walks in with his like ketchup and mustard jacket on, and 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 brings with him all the baggage that comes with Carson Wentz. Sometimes you're tempted to draft random wide res- running backs ahead of Jahan Dawson. Don't do that, I don't think. That being Agreed. said, Carson Wentz uh, has a dead cap of $27 million this year. So, obviously, the Roma well, they, ju- they, they just traded No, 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 I know. But next year, his uh, dead cap goes to zero. Oh, that is such great news. But, but is it for Dawson? Because I yes. know that we say Wentz is not great, but Wentz is better than an incoming rookie. Uh, short like- term, short term. No, Baker will be fine there. Uh, Brian Robinson Jr., third round pick, running back out of Alabama. I mean, all the commanders did this offseason was fight tooth and nail to keep J.D. McKissick and then spend a third round pick on a, a really, I won't call him a solid back. I mean, I think Brian Robinson Jr. is is very solid. He's not yes. spectacular. He comes out of Alabama. He will go in and do, and they have. Uh, Who's the other depth back from last what, year? Jared Patterson. Jared Patterson. Oh, there. he's toast. What I'm saying is that this team has a deep running back room. Yep. All designed to keep Antonio Gibson from being unleashed. hurt, hurt yeah. or unleashed. <laughs> Both, right? Yeah. This, so there's no way that Brian Robinson Jr. does not have a negative effect on Gibson. I've seen some people say that. They, they don't think that's going to happen. If Brian Robinson only gets 100 carries as his rookie year, which he's a third-round pick, that's five carries a game. Like he's That's he's, a problem he's when you give up third to. downs to McKissick. And, and all of those come at the expense of Gibson. Now, Gibson is hyper-talented, can be very efficient, can still be good for fantasy, but I do think that Brian Robinson Jr. makes – you know, Gibson is going to be falling in my drafts when I'm comparing him to other people – because of Brian Robinson Jr. Yeah, Gibson it becomes a much scarier uh, f- fantasy draft pick because you know he'll be he'll still be a low second, high third round pick even with this draft selection here. And a thing that concerns me the injuries to Gibson. Him seeing, I mean, he kept playing, but he just felt like Antonio Gibson was always banged up. Uh, but Gibson, he's got a little bit of the itis. He has a fumbling issue. Brian Robinson does not have a fumbling issue. So I think that that is also weighing in that. Like his his father? (laughs) Sure, sure. (laughs) Uh, uh, So my champion, uh, he's he's in danger a little bit here. Yeah. Yeah, And I don't like it. They're having to protect the, the situation there in the backfield. The Eagles, we'll move on. Also, I mean, when you... Trade for Carson Wentz. You better load up the running back room. <laughs> right. Yeah. Well, I mean, Carson Whatever Wentz, it takes. Whatever Carson Wentz was, he's better now with the first and third round offensive addition. Certainly. Uh, A.J. Brown was the big trade for the Eagles. Uh, they moved the first and third round pick. They picked up A.J. Brown. Huge implications. If you want to hear the whole discourse on A.J. Brown and that trade, yesterday's new, or I'm sorry, Tuesday's news, we talked all about it. We're not going to linger there other than to say Jalen Hurts came away a winner with what transpired at the draft, and Devontae Smith came away uh, redraft and dynasty as a downgrade. Now, is he still going to be a valuable, fa- valuable fantasy player? I think yes. so. Yes. Is He's he still great. hyper-talented? Yeah, of course. Is, is he, he going to be a superstar? No. Probably not. But, but, he still can, but, he could but be, probably not. You know, he could be a Higgins to A.J. Brown's chase. He can be a... Thielen to uh, Justin Jefferson. There, there is room for that if the pie grows. But that's the story. Sure. I mean, that's the story for the Eagles, right? We don't have other high impact draft selections. It was the AJ nope. Brown tail. That is correct. Uh, Cowboys. 
Uh, third round wide receiver Jalen Tolbert. I like him. You you mentioned Mike that they'd probably spend up on a wide receiver a little bit uh, later than we thought they might. Yeah, but third round. I mean, that's still day two. Jalen Tolbert out of South Alabama. James Washington just goes places to not play. <laughs> Basically, I mean, you know, twenty three, so he's a uh, he's a little bit older, but he two the his last two years in college over a thousand yards, eight touchdowns. Like that's the that's what I want to see from him, and the opportunity here is it's not too bad. I know Michael Gallup got the contract, but he's still coming off the uh, the ACL tear. There is room for a third pass catcher here uh, for the Dallas Cowboys, and I mean, he'll probably be fighting with the with Doctor Schultz for targets, and Doctor Schultz will likely win that battle for the first year. But he's it, like in the back of your second round in, in the in your rookie drafts, Tolbert is a guy that I would really like to get on my team yeah Tolbert is is fine it's it's ironic that this becomes a little bit crowded even though there's no star it's just a bunch of like second tier you've got well, a they incoming lost Cooper, rookie they lost uh Tedder Wilson right but you've you know you've got the James Washington and Tolbert and oh, Gallup James and Washington but but my point is that this is just good for Dak it's good yes. because they lost those pieces. It's good that they bring in a third round wide receiver just to have more ammunition uh, for their offense. So, it, you know, I'm, I'm glad they didn't go without drafting a wide receiver in this class. I'm not crazy about Tolbert, um, but I think it's good for Dak. NFC West. Death, taxes, Seahawks, second round, first round running backs. <sighs> it must be established. I'm so thankful that I can count on Pete Carroll here. This was one of my draft predictions that felt real good because, you know, and then in the draft, they're sitting there and they could have taken Malik Willis they here. They could have. And it was like, oh, they're not going to. I literally got to the point where I was like, they had back-to-back -back picks. And I'm like, ah, they went with the linebacker and they got one left and they're going to go off inside. And it's got to be Willis, right? Like, they're not going to take another running back with Willis on the board and they need the quarterback. It's ironic. I knew that they wouldn't take Willis when the first of their two back-to-back -back picks wasn't Willis cuz I feel like if you're going to bring the quarterback, you pay respect. Oh, that's funny. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so, all this to say Kenneth Walker the 3rd out of Michigan State, uh really one of the names that ends in, ends up in the darling category for fantasy players, I think. Um some people just love Kenneth Walker. Some people just believe that the ceiling is extremely high. And look, you second round draft pick. This is bad for Rashad Penny. It's worse for Chris Carson. But it's but it's bad for Penny because let's say he goes out and has some moderate success this year. It's going to be the you know, he had a few games last year with Pete Carroll where he was spectacular. You're gonna have a Pete Carroll year this year. And then you're going to be moving on potentially because the money, like you, you spend a second round draft pick on on Walker. Are they going to keep both of those guys around? I mean, I'm not it's going to not put it likely. past them, but I don't think it's going to happen. And Carson, he may not play another down. I think that's the biggest takeaway for me is that Chris Carson is with that injury, uh, with his neck. Uh, I think it's a situation that the Seahawks are very nervous that he's going to be back to football at all. Kenneth Walker is a silky smooth runner. 260 plus carries this past year, 1600 rushing yards, 18 touchdowns. I mean, he like that's a that is an absolute dominant year. Love seeing a running back going to a place that will establish it coming off of a huge workload and you know, handling his business. But 19 in 3 years as a player in college at the running back position he tallied 19 total receptions. That is absurd. It just doesn't do it. If it the, the school didn't. You're talking Michigan State did not. 260 carries, 13 receptions this past year. That's that's crazy so for the running back position. Yes. Yeah. So I mean, that's wild. Uh, you you look at him and you say first and second down, and that's maybe the, where, where Jason says the ceiling is so different for for Brees, but a system and a plan to run the football and a one that's been successful. One where we've seen Rashad Penny come out of the woodwork, success. Chris Carson, success. Before that was, was Marshawn Lynch, was uh, Thomas Rawls. This is a long history sure. of talent winning at running back in Seattle. Maybe it's just first and second down, but... You and know. goal line. He's very, he's very very talented. I just worry he's going to run against a lot of 
stacked boxes with Drew Locke back behind center, and he will split time at least this year with Rashad Penny. So it's it's uh, you know it's it, it's good draft capital. It's good establish it, but I do worry about some of the upside. Well, uh, Rashad Penny has not been a pillar of health. No, fair. No, and if that that happens, it's it's wheels up. Yeah, Forty ers selected a third round running back <laughs> because of course they did. Oh man, what are you doing, Ty Davis Price? What are you doing? Well, ridiculous. I, yeah, I mean Trey Sermon in the third last year, right? And, oh, he's he's toast. And then Ty Davis Price. Oh, they lost most there. Eli Mitchell, lots of injuries. Yeah. Six round draft capital. Hardy had injuries. I mean, they hasty. We, uh, yeah, sorry, hasty. We knew that they were going to take a running back. It's just upsetting when they grab someone in the third round. Um, you know, four four eight. So he's got good enough speed uh, for them. And I mean, he's, that's not forty nine ers speed though. Well, but he's a big back. I know, but I'm saying like they, the Shanahan system with with Mostert and and the missile, like those guys are crazy fast. And this this feels more like the Trey Sermon pick, which where, is a four five seven guy. Where on paper you're like, yeah, I'm gonna get this big bruiser in, and then you put him in your offense, you go, you're too slow. Maybe. So I don't, this is with his size though. He's, but are he's you 90th. downgrading Eli Mitchell? Yeah, I am. I, okay. I've tried to unload him in a couple of uh, dynasty spots, and I've been so far unsuccessful uh, because of Davis Price. I think. Um, and it's, <laughs> is it you've been unsuccessful trading Mitchell because of the reason that you want to trade Mitchell? Yeah. <laughs> well, well, uh, yes. well lit. Yeah. Yes, uh, that's exactly right. Well, you see, <laughs> I don't like him, but maybe you should. So, for fantasy purposes. <laughs> For years, it's been really, really difficult to trust a, a Shanahan back. We know that if if you've got if you've got a league where you get team running backs, go ahead, man. Sure. Grab the Niners; they're going to be great. But if I mean Jeff Wilson, is he on the goal line, or is it now Davis Price, or is it Elijah? Or right. I mean, there's just so many op Or Trey Sermon, last year's third round pick. There's just so many options here, so it really makes it murky. It, it makes hurts it Elijah. Yeah, it makes it bad for rookie drafts. Yeah. Right? I mean, where you're just like... I want to avoid you the situation. You could waste the pick. And unfortunately, I have like the whole running back core on my team. <laughs> and you still have Trey Sermon. Yeah. If you had not saved your Trey Sermon pick with Eli Mitchell... Uh-huh. Yeah, I know. You would be... You had just set it on fire. Yeah. <laughs> uh, all right. Are we on to Arizona? Yep. All right. The big trade first round draft pick, they, they didn't use it on... A rookie wide receiver. They traded it. They got Hollywood Brown, who now is the de facto number one in the Cardinal offense for the first six weeks after the DeAndre Hopkins suspension. Full breakdown of that move was on Tuesday's show. However, the Hopkins news broke at the end, so we can stay here real quick. Hollywood, he's going to help Kyler. He's going to hopefully do some things to this offense that makes not having Hopkins a part of it sustainable. And suddenly, with Hopkins going down, even Trey McBride, their second-round draft pick, mm -hmm. looks like he may have some instant value on this team uh, just, to, just to stretch the field. He's a great pass catcher, and they may need to go with more 12 personnel when Hopkins is out. Yeah, I, re I refuse to believe that any rookie tight end is going to have immediate value, no matter the situation, because they just don't. Um, but uh, I think Hollywood is is going to be really really important i mean you had what chris kirk had over 100 targets last year Trey um, mcbride will will not be a fantasy correct reliable player but he will be able to go and do what maybe uh evan ingram did in his rookie season you know he's not going to do what pitts did but he's going to go out and make a play here or there that helps kyler i'm saying it more from the angle of you know kyler's not just throwing to antoine wesley Right, he's going no, to be throwing the ball to Trey McBride. Yeah, right. and, and McBride is is very good. He might have the best hands in the entire class, including the wide receivers. the The other big news here was that uh, even though the the Cardinals did select a running back, it was not until the sixth round. This is a James Conner uh, full steam ahead until broken. Do you feel more confident in Eno Benjamin being actually usable? Because uh, no. for it was it was Conner. And Chase Edmonds, when when both are healthy, both are doing things. Uh, it even with all the money they gave to James Conner, do you 
You think they'll abandon the two-back system? I do. I think it's going to be James Conner right. and then a sprinkling in of these six-round running backs behind him. Which are well, Jonathan Ward, Eno Benjamin, yeah. and uh, Keontae, Keontae Ingram, Ingram yep. out of USC. Uh, so, uh, you know, Rondale Moore, it, it's hard to – Oh, to, yeah, he's around. Uh, yeah, I, I, I think it was Colin Coward was talking about how, like, the Cardinals – We'll be fine without Hopkins because they have budding superstar Rondale Moore and and AJ Green and Ertz and McBride and Hollywood and the the funniest tweet about the Hopkins suspension I saw I can't remember who sent it out but they said this is exactly what Andy Isabella needs <laughs> oh my god <laughs> it's his time he's I mean, gonna shine <laughs> it's not ever really like Rondale I don't think has done anything to fail no he's not other than not be very tall. Or utilized, yeah. This, which is maybe his fault, but I maybe maybe it will be an opportunity for him. It will. Uh, maybe he'll get the ball more than you know two yards behind the line of scrimmage. All right, moving on to our final team in the NFC right here, the Rams at twelve and five last year. Forget about a first rounder. Forget about a second rounder. They don't need. They, they've they said, don't need picks. They've said words about what they think about picks. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> they did select. Uh, Former beloved Kyron Williams. It's it's John Kelly all over again. Running back, yeah. <laughs> Notre Dame, fifth round. The only reason I even glance this direction is a combination of not the combine, but the field. Yes. Liking what Kyron Williams does and the unknown of Cam Akers' real true future. Whether Now, do I think I, – honestly, I think Cam Akers is going to be pretty good. I think he's going to get an offseason in – get healthy, get strong, get better, and be pretty impactful for this team. But you are coming back from a devastating injury. There is no guarantee you will be what you were or could have been. So at least in that regard, it could be more of a committee than we think. Well, Henderson Kyron could be a part there. of the committee. Yeah, Henderson is is the number two back. Sony Michelle uh, is a free agent. He won't be re-signed because of this signing. Um, Kyron is... I mean, that was a great comp. It, they love drafting guys that we yes. really, really like, really, really <laughs> like, and they're irrelevant. Okay. Any other news break, Brooksy? No, sir. Okay. I think it's going to do it for us today. Uh, we'll be back, like I said, Rookie Mock Draft next week. There's a lot going on. Make sure you check out the Ultimate Draft Kit, ultimatedraftkit.com. Get in there. Check out the rankings. The full UDK drops June 1. Goodbye. Thank you for listening to another episode of the Fantasy Footballers Podcast. Join our fantasy football community on jointhefoot.com and follow us on Twitter at the FFBallers.